The fatal abuse of a 16-month-old toddler named Chung In by her adoptive parents has triggered an outpouring of shock, grief, and anger across South Korea. Prior to the second hearing of the high-profile case, the campaign entitled Sorry Chung In continued not only nationwide but also in Indonesia and Malaysia to raise awareness about the tragic case and child abuse. The netizens of the two countries shared how to write and send a petition to the judge in Korea, calling for the court to heavily punish the adopted parents with the captions, I hope this petition arrives at the court on time. The online campaign went viral even in China, Australia, Japan, Canada, and other countries. Amid the increasing public attention, the second hearing of the case was held on Wednesday with a series of testimony on abuse. A teacher at Changin's daycare center virtually attended the hearing as the first witness and testified that multiple bruises were found on Changin's body ever since she came to the daycare center in March last year. She said Changin was such a bright and cheerful kid when she first came to the center. She was growing up well with no health problems. Then she was gone for two months since July last year, and when she came back, she looked completely different with darker shade on skin and huge weight loss. She was shaking her legs so hard that she couldn't even stand still. Her conditions were getting worse by the day. The teacher said the day before she died, jung In looked like she gave up on everything. She didn't eat any of her favorite snacks or played with her favorite toys. And eventually, jung In died reportedly of severe abdominal injuries and internal bleeding that were caused by strong external force. Outside the courts, protesters were seen holding signs demanding the heavy punishment for adopted parents just like they did for the first trial. Meanwhile, police have added murder charges against a couple who allegedly abused their 10-year-old living niece and forcefully immersed her in a bathtub, eventually causing her death. Police found that the couple inflicted at least two rounds of such water torture-style acts last month, along with beatings on 20 occasions since December last year. Thus, the police determined that the couple was aware that the child is prone to death with such a level of assault and abuse and decided to apply murder charge on top of child abuse charges. The police, however, decided not to disclose the couple's identities to the public, which became legally available under the murder charge, citing potential secondary damage.